I spent thousands of dollars learning jewelry designs and in this video I will share all of the basic interfaces and navigation in Rhino 8 for jewelry designers or anyone who wants to learn Rhino without having to pay for expensive courses. Let's start first by opening our Rhino Serious 3D software. So this window is the intro whenever you open Rhino and there will be some interesting information like webinar, courses, new plugins or tips for example. We can go on and create a new project by going to the new tab and here we can actually click on a template file that you can open up regarding uh, the unit we are going to use for our object. For jewelry design, we are going to select small objects and work in millimeters. So this is the interface of Rhino. I know it looks intimidating at first, there is a lot of options and buttons, but it is actually user friendly, trust me. On the top of our workspace, you can find the toolbar. All of these include all of the functions and comments. On the bottom, we have our command line, which we will type our prompt. Whatever you type in the command, there will be some information that will appear here. And even if uh, we just click on something, all of our steps will be recorded here. It is useful to see our previous steps, for example. Below, we have our function tabs, which contains various functions such as opening an object, panning, undo or redo. This is the standard tab, which include the mostly uh, used function like our main standard viewport here. But let's say that uh, you want more options. You can go to the viewport layout tab, which will contain more detailed function about your viewport layout, for example. So the standard tab relates to the uh, general function. So on the left side, we also have our general tools regarding drawing like objects, like a line or a geometric piece and editing function like removing, splitting or cutting, for example. We are still on the standard tab, which contains our most used tools, but if we go on and change our tab, we will have more detailed tools for our needs. At the end, there is a new VA tab, which I want to talk about, as you can see, and this tab shows us all the new functions added to the software. This is useful for us, and it teaches us about updates and the latest function in Rhino 8. Let's just go back to our standard tabs. On the center, we have uh, four viewports which are the standard uh, with a front, top, side and perspective view of the jewelry we will create. On the bottom, you can select which view you want to work with and it will be shown in blue whenever you change it. On the right side, we have generally speaking four properties tab. Just like in Photoshop, we have our layers tab, display and here we have the help tab. Whenever you need some information about certain function, this is where you will mostly find your answers. On the bottom, we have our OSNAP that we can enable on the bottom right, uh, where we have all our toggle snap. So what does it do? Let's say that we want to create a line and we select grid snap, it will automatically snap our marker on the intersection of the grid. On the bottom left, we have our C plane with X and Y axis. And when you move the mouse around, it will show you the placement of your cursor on the grid. We also have our measurement unit and our layer selected, which is uh, set uh, to the default right now. Let me show you guys the basic navigation. We have our four views and you can double click on, on a view uh, to enlarge it. For example, if you double click on top view, then it will enlarge it. To move around, you have to click and hold the right mouse button. If you're using Mac, 
you can use two fingers on the mouse pad to zoom in or just pan around. If you hold the right click on the perspective view, you can orbit around the grid. But uh, if you want to pan around, then hold shift while holding down the right mouse button. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Another thing to consider is the selection function. When you click uh, the left mouse button and drag from the left to right or right to left, we have to keep in mind that it does not do the same thing. You can see when you drag from uh, left to right, it will have a solid box which will select every item inside the window. And when you drag from the right to left, it will select every item that touches the windows. When you hover into certain tools, you will see there can be two functions with the right or left click, depending on what uh, you want to do. The tool section is pretty straightforward. If we want to make a cube, there is a cube here. And uh, if you click on the drop down arrow, there will be more primitive options, such as a cylinder or sphere. Select which view you want to work and uh, just click and draw a box. The other way uh, to create an object is just by typing a prompt on the command line on the top. When you write a box and before you do anything, Rhino is guessing or giving us more options based on whatever we type. It really helps us to reach certain functions faster. We can also do the same thing by searching in our toolbar and click on solid, menu, then box. Or you can find it on the tab. So basically, you can do the same stuff on Rhino using different methods. Alright, so let's just click on the box and on the command line you can see a message. First corner of base. With a different option we can choose from. If you don't select any option, then you can place on the grid your first corner of the box by clicking anywhere. And you can see that uh, it is not finished because uh, you have to determine the base length and you can also set it on different views but the plane of uh, the base changes. You can orbit or pan around while finishing the box. Let's talk about the viewing mode which uh, you can switch it when you click on the drop down arrow of a view. Now it is currently set to wireframe. You can change it to shaded for example and it will uh, change the view of the object in a solid box. There are other options available like rendered mode for example and if this object has been assigned a material which we are going to see on another video, we will be able to see our object in that material. To change all the viewing mode uh, for all the viewport. Uh, let me show you a quick way to do it is by going on this little sphere, click on the drop down arrow and you will be able to see different options. Let's hover into this option. If you uh, right click on it, it will change all the viewport at the same time. You can also change the view by clicking on the display window of uh, the right side of Rhino and also change the background color that is suited for your workflow. To restore everything, just click on the edit button on the bottom and click on restore defaults. Okay, now on the grid, you can see that I've created a box on a new layer and I would like to hide it. I'm currently on the box layer, which you can see, it is activated with a check mark. If I want to hide, I have to switch to another layer, then click on uh, the little light bulb sign, light bulb icon to show or hide it. Let me show you guys how uh, to change the size of the grid or board, but it is called grid. Uh, so you have to go in tools, then select option and grid. There you can change the line count or turning on or off some uh, functions. 
one of the tools we are going to use for jewelry is the line tool which allows us to draw objects and it's really similar to illustrator or photoshop pen tool with uh, control point curves the way that rhino works the best is when you draw profile and then you work with profile we have our line perfectly flat and if we want to turn it into a 3d object we can extrude by navigating on our top bar and go on the surface section extrude curve and select straight the other way to do this is by typing on the command prompt same thing extrude curves then select which object you will be able to select some option like solid or both side by uh, using your mouse you can adjust the size or uh, if you want a precise measurement then you can uh, simply type the distance you need and then hit enter that's it for today obviously i could not cover everything there is to know about rhino a jewelry design in uh, one video but please like and subscribe to the channel and in the next video i'll show you some uh, essential function of making jewelry in rhinoceros 3d